The question, is it plausible that a single action revolver can fire if nothing comes in contact with the trigger? Well, we'll see if we can answer that today. Let's go. What's up crew, it's Chris with Clover Tack and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is gonna be a little bit unique, probably a lot of talking gonna go on, uh, but I encourage you to stay with me through the entire video. Uh, what we're talking about here are things related to Alec Baldwin and the tragedy that happened on the set of the movie Rust. And we're gonna take a look at several single action revolvers today, how they function mechanically, and talk about this, this theory, this idea, that the revolver went off without Alec Baldwin actually having his finger on the trigger. I've got a new Birdie Cattleman revolver here. I've also got a Heritage Barkeep, uh, as well as a new model Ruger Vaquero. We got a lot of talking that needs to happen before we get to looking at the mechanics of those revolvers. So let's start off with the fact that this was 100% an avoidable tragedy. And as such, uh, I would appreciate the utmost respect for that fact with any comments down below. If you're lewd, you're crude, you're snarky, don't expect those comments to see the light of day. Today, we're addressing specifically the plausibility of the statement made that Alec Baldwin's finger was not on the trigger. We're not here to play the blame game. I think there's plenty of blame to go around from live ammunition being on the set to what kind of shape mechanically was that revolver in to who was in charge of the props. Uh, why was somebody standing downrange from a firearm to begin with? Uh, just a lot of unanswered questions. The investigation will bear those out. I think we'll know much more facts about this situation in the future. So let's keep this more on the mechanical side. And again, just the plausibility of whether or not a single action revolver can fire without you actually touching the trigger in any way. And we're talking plausibility here, not possibility. There could be life on other planets. An asteroid could eliminate the Earth, wipe us out in the next couple of weeks. Anything is possible. I wanna talk about plausible. Now, in addition to this video, I've got a couple of more dealing with single action revolvers, particularly uh, cylinder pin safeties, uh, as well as the hammer click and positions. Those will be in links later on at the end of the video. Now, with all that out of the way, let's get into the mechanics of these revolvers and whether or not them firing without having your finger on the trigger or brushing that trigger is even plausible. All right, here we are with my Uberti. This one uh, chambered for 4440, doesn't really matter, but single action revolver, probably the closest example to uh, what we're hearing about with um, Alec Baldwin and what he was using. And you can see with the hammer all the way forward in the rested position, that firing pin is protruding right there. Um, and we'll cock this thing back and just show you, it is a fixed firing pin. The other examples I have are not gonna be uh, like that, not gonna be a hammer spur uh, type firing pin. So anyway, the only way this firing pin protrudes at all uh, on any type of a rebound or a slip is before you get to that first position, that first notch, that first click. You can see the firing pin wants to protrude there. Problem is with modern ammunition, that should not be enough force. That's a major safety issue with modern ammunition if it's being set off by that amount of force. So I don't really see that as the issue. Uh, now, Assuming everything's working properly, and with this revolver it is, once we get to that click, the first uh, position here on this, it can't go forward. You can't even pull the trigger and make it go forward. You cannot make that hammer go forward, well, again, with this one operating properly, without coming all the way back, pushing the trigger, which, of course, Alec Baldwin says he did not do, and letting that hammer down. It's the only way you're going to get it to fall back forward. So right there, it's stuck. You can't do it. Even if we go to that next position, it's stuck. We can't do it. And obviously, if we pull it back here, it's not hitting, it's, it's being stopped. So about the only way to, uh, to slip anyway and make this fire would be to go all the way back. And when you go all the way back, you accidentally, as you get to here, and right about the moment your finger slips, you grab that trigger and you could just barely brush the trigger. I just barely ran my thumb over it. And as you can see, the firing pin is down. 
but my finger was on the trigger. Now this is a little Heritage Revolver in uh, 22 in rimfire, and it's really hard to see the firing pin, but it's in here. And again, we got the same issue uh, because if we go as far as that first position or click, trigger's locked up and it won't rebound forward far enough. We go to this click, same thing, trigger locked up. It's not coming forward to smash anything there, to set anything off. Uh, notice this is a different design as well. Firing pin is in here. The hammer is flat and it actually hits the firing pin. Um, this is a much more modern and safer um, a lot of people would argue anyway, design, and I doubt that the ones used on set are, probably, are like this. I, I would think they're more like that Uberti. Uh, but yeah, the only way to get that hammer forward again is to go all the way back uh, and ease it down, push the trigger and ease it down. And of course you can see the firing pin is protruding that way. Um, we can't even get with this one by, we were rocking that Uberti with the fixed firing pin, we were rocking it back and forth, and it's like, you can't even rock the hammer there's no spring tension to speak of right in there so especially with no spring tension and this being a free floating style firing pin uh, just no pressure uh, or force being applied to that at all uh, so again uh, how can you make this one work well you think your finger is not on the trigger but it actually is you cock this thing all the way back you brush that trigger just the tiniest little bit and you seen my thumb there oh it's not like i was manhandling that trigger i just barely had my thumb on it uh, and it went off and then of course there you can see the firing pin is protruding in that one now this is my ruger vaquero chambered for 45 long colt and in the video i mentioned earlier where i was explaining hammer clicks and positions there's been some discussion whether alec baldwin could have been using one of these and it slipped forward because it doesn't have any positions. It, you, you go all the way back to that uh, fully cocked position and there's nothing in between. There's no, like, nothing in between, right? And so would that have enough force, right? Could it come forward? Could that be the case? And notice, like that Heritage, we're talking about a flat style hammer with a uh, firing pin in here with a little spring, a free floating one. And short answer is no. I mean, if you look in here, um, I could pull this back and no firing pin. I can get it back that far. Nothing's coming out. Nothing's protruding. Nothing's protruding. Again, watch this. Watch as I cock this back to full cock. Finger slips. I bump that trigger the least little bit. So I got it back. I'm going to slip off, bump that trigger the least little bit, and... I don't know if you've seen it in here, but that firing pin did protrude. So watch closely in this area one more time. Gonna put some pressure on it, bump that trigger. Boom, there it is, firing pin is out. But again, my finger was on the trigger and on the trigger more so with this one, more deliberate than either of the first two examples. The first two examples was more of a brush. This one, I actually, you actually gotta put quite a bit of force. So now that we've taken a look at the mechanical side of things, I think just from that data alone, at least in my opinion, uh, I don't think it's possible at all that these revolvers typically go off without any kind of interaction with that trigger. Now, does that mean you deliberately pulled the trigger or you just brushed the trigger? Maybe something else got into the trigger guard. Again, we get into the possible, not the plausible, but as far as them going off without any kind of interaction on that trigger, I think I can say anyway, I don't know about you, uh, that that does not seem plausible at all. But I also want to add some context here at the end, and that's why I said earlier, stick with me on this video, because I spent um, all day yesterday, the day prior to recording this actual video, uh, I didn't want to record hours and hours of footage and drag this video out, but I spent all day uh, with live rounds out on my range in a safe, controlled environment, trying to make pretty much every single single action revolver I own, which is several, uh, go off without uh, any interaction with the trigger uh, and we're talking about literally hundreds and hundreds of tries across a dozen different revolvers or so uh, and I never could make it happen. Hopefully you can take what we've talked about and shown today you can apply that to some of these assumptions and speculations around this particular tragedy and sort of form your own educated opinions. 
Then my heart goes out to the friends and family of those affected by this tragedy. And hopefully moving forward, we can utilize this as an opportunity to educate others on how firearms work, on safe firearm handling, and just overall responsible firearm ownership. So once again, got some videos here dealing with the clicks and positions of hammers on single action revolvers as well as cylinder pin safety. So check those out if you want to. As for this one, we're done. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. And until next time, don't forget to chain fire freedom.